How's it going guys? So I've been reading the comments on the last few videos and I've been noticing that a lot of you guys want to see this pond. This is my big pond. I say it like with air quotes because it's not that big. Um, it's big enough for the turtles that are in it, but it's bigger than my other two. So it's called the big pond. So don't be like, why are you calling it the big pond? It's not even that big. Well, it's the biggest pond that I have. So um, a lot of you want to see this. So in this video, I'm going to show you this and the other two, just as an update. Quite honestly, guys, um, this one's not looking too good. I don't know, you'll see in a minute, these two ponds did amazing this year. This pond did horrible, and I'll show you why, and I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll figure it out. Okay, so here is the turtle setup in this area. So this is like for all the aquatics and the box turtles and stuff. And then over there we have Scully's pen. Um, right now the box turtles are in there with Scully because in this pen, this is where the box turtles usually are, I need to do some renovating before it's you know suitable for them. I need to fix the doghouse that's in there. It's got some problems. I need to redo some of the water area because the filtration system went bad and it's just, I just need to go in there and redo some stuff. I need to hide a lot of cords and a lot of the plumbing for the filtration of this pond and I need to go around and touch up some um, perimeter stuff, like the border. So that's why the box rolls aren't in there, aren't in there uh, at this moment. They are in there. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the ponds. We're gonna go ahead and start with the big pond, just cause that's what everyone says they wanna see. We're gonna go ahead and start with this grasshopper right here. This is Frederick, um, had him for about uh, seven seconds now. Pretty cool guy. We're gonna go ahead and scare him off. Dude, this guy has like a... Oh my gosh. I was gonna throw him in there in the pond, but he escaped. Anyway, so this is the big pond. Pretty sure you can tell why I said it's been having some problems. And that is because the excessive amount of algae in the water, as you can see, it looks like, it just looks like Toxic ooze from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't even watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I just know that's what it would look like. So here it is. This is the, the big pond, as you know we would call it. Um, so in here we have six sliders, a Midland painted turtle, two Mississippi excuse me, I got the teacups all of a sudden. Two Mississippi map turtles, a diamondback terrapin, and that's it. So not, not a whole lot. Here we have the Midland Painted Baskin right now. It got pretty chilly last night and it was cool this morning so they were all out basking right before I started the video but she's the only one with like nerves of steel to be out here while I'm filming. But as you can see there's a slider right there, red eared slider. So all five sliders are red eared and then I have one that is a red eared yellow belly hybrid. That is Fireball. And another one just popped up right here. All the sliders. Um, Fireball is a yellow belly radiator slider hybrid. All of the sliders, oh look, there she is right now. Fireball. All the sliders last year overwintered, which I'm very happy about because the year previous, Fireball here, she actually made it like two thirds of the way through the winter. Look, there's Shadow right there. She made it just about two thirds of the way through the winter. And then she started coming out of the water and tried basking like when the sun wasn't out, when it was raining or sleeting. So that was her telling me that, you know, her, her body wasn't able to maintain that dormant state for much longer. So I actually brought her inside. There's Shadow again over there. I brought her inside and took, put her in a stock tank, a temporary setup for the remainder of the winter. She did great, put her back out here and I figured I would test it again this, or last winter, and she overwintered the entire time. So she might have just needed to adapt to it since she is part yellow belly, and where yellow bellies are native, it we usually don't have winters as long as Ohio winters are. So yeah, she overwintered perfectly fine all six months last year. So I'm hoping she'll do it again, and if I have to bring her in again, I will. I'm prepared to do that, and if not, then that's, Great, and there she is cruising. We have, who is that? It looks like one of the twins. 
I got two yellow or two red ears in here that look almost identical, and I got them off Craigslist, and I call them the twins because they look like they're twins. They honestly are probably from the same clutch. There's Sly over there. I've had her for quite a while. I didn't realize how much she's grown until I looked at pictures of when I originally got her. Then obviously we got all the goldfish, and then there's a bass in there, and the you know the original catfish is still in there. So there's a bee flying around. So they're all doing good. It's just there's a bunch of algae in the water, and I spent like 150 bucks a couple months ago. I hooked up a whole nother um, UV sterilizer filter, which I can show you in the video. Hooked that up, and it did diddly squat it did nothing it was rated it wasn't rated up to as many gallons as this it wasn't like uh you know it wasn't super super far off like i figured it at least could have made it less green but it did pretty much nothing um multiple times i've drained it done water changes cleaned it out and it just didn't do much i'm assuming it's because this year we just had a lot of sun and there's not a whole lot of stuff shading the pond. The only thing that it you know gets shade from is in the morning, like early morning, up until about maybe eight or nine o'clock. The barn here will shade it, but other than that, it's got full sun. So um, next year, it's going to be definitely something that I, I'll focus on once I start working full time again. I'll start putting some paychecks into my my setups here. We'll hook them up with a nice filter and uv sterilizers and a bigger pump and everything like that but um it, it worked fine this year and i'm sure it'll it'll maintain it during the winter and next year next come you know come next spring we're gonna go ahead and switch gears and focus on this pond here because this year i was doing stuff with other things so um yeah that's pretty much it it's hard for me to pull turtles out just because unless i want to spend 45 minutes doing scoops and stirring all this up with my net over there that's like pretty much the only way you're gonna see anything other than the painted and the sliders and you know we saw shadow a little bit but oh also there's i forgot to mention this there's a pink belly slider not i'm sorry there's a pink belly side neck and the pink belly snapper is in here as well so there's the six sliders there's a two mississippi maps there's the pink belly side neck the pink belly snapper and the painted turtle. I knew I was missing something. I just, I don't know why I forgot them. So that, those are the turtles in here and all the fish and everything. There's Sally, the big female red eared slider. And there's Phelps right there. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next pond. And just take a quick comparison here. The water of this pond versus, we walk over here the water in this pond so this is the common snapping turtle pond it's i think this is a 200 gallon pond i mean it's as you can see it isn't green it's clear it's got a slight tint of tannins in it just because there's you know logs and wood as you can see in it um but other than that it's clear so this pond here um pretty easy to maintain it's you know, obviously it's been kept fairly well. Um, as you can see, we have some, as well as that pond, we have some water lettuce here. Now that helps cut back on a lot of the algae that grows just because it shades. It's like a blanket that goes over top of the water that shades it and keeps, uh, you know, algae and stuff from growing. But also, <clears throat> excuse me, also the border here it also helps shades it once it gets into like late afternoon. So um, in here we have one common snapping turtle and I'm pretty sure I know where he is. If he's in that spot, I'll grab him. We have one common snapper, a few goldfish, and that's about it. Got the water lettuce. Here we have a nice view of the pond. Nothing too crazy, but I did set it up for him, which is why it's no, it's, it ain't nothing crazy. He's not there, where is he? I don't wanna get my fingers bit because I was, I wasn't careful. Oh my gosh, I literally just tripped, my bad. 
You might have heard that in the video. Where is he at? I don't see him. He's probably down the bottom. So we will we'll revisit this pond after we take a look at the third one. Because I want to show you guys this guy. He's pretty neat. But he's probably, because I messed with him earlier today, he's probably hiding because I messed with him. And he's usually under this, underneath this log here, but he's not there right now. You know what? I'm going to find him and uh, get back with you. He's got to be down in there somewhere. I'm pretty sure he's in this general vicinity because I came out, you know, came out here right before I started filming to pull a couple weeds and I messed with him. So he probably went down there and is hiding because he was up on one of these ledges. But that's all right. If he comes out, that'll be great. If not, then we'll see him in another video. But yeah, this is pretty much the pond. The common snapper pond. He's doing super well. I will do a video on him before the winter comes because I want you guys to see him. He's getting pretty big and he's a, a whole heck of a lot feistier. The reason I was so like worried about feeling around for him is because unlike most snapping turtles, I'm sorry for the wind if there's any, unless, unlike most snapping turtles, this dude will bite you underwater. I know that for a fact. I put him in there for the winter last year and when I was looking for him, I was using the net and he was biting the net underwater. That's very unturtle like that's not something they usually do so he's mean and i don't want to get bit by him because he's at the size now where he would be able to do some damage not take off a hand but like you would get cut up pretty good and it might slice a tendon or something so playing smart here that's why i'm allowed to have snappers now because i need to play it smart so moving on to the third and final pond this honestly is my favorite setup out of the three this is the Eastern Spiny Soft Shell enclosure. So the only thing in here is my Darwin, my Eastern Spiny Soft Shell, a couple goldfish, a catfish. Then we got snapper and the goldfish and then a whole bunch of turtles in there. So the soft shell and the snapper are now to the age and size of where they started getting territorial with other turtles. So I separated them and yeah, so She's got her pond to herself. He's got his pond to himself. And then the, the friendly turtles all share the big pond. So the chances of us seeing her in here are super slim just because, you know, the water lettuce, she's a soft shell, they're timid as, as it is. And she's probably buried in the sand. So um, we're gonna go ahead and look, as you can see in here, the water is like crystal clear. See that? Oh, maybe you can see Darwin in there, who knows? The water is crystal clear, and that's because the filter is a super, like, let me show you my setup here, all right? So we got a pump in here, pumps the water through this hose and into this bucket filter that I made. So the bucket filter, literally all it has is PVC um, egg crating, which you can get at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Some people call it like lighting, light crating or something like that. It's egg crate, it's the white plastic checkered stuff. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And then there's like 20 bath sponges and then there's some pillow stuffing in here. So all the water filters through here, comes out and into this like bio ball filter setup I have. So these are real cattails and they, they've they spread. I didn't have this much, I didn't plant this much in them uh, in this bog filter. They've spread and they've all you know, bloomed with little cattails and it's super cool. But this is a liner, like a plastic liner pond that I had that on the bottom, I put a bunch of lava rock. On top of the lava rock, I put a thin layer of pea gravel. On top of that, I put a bunch of dirt and mud and stuff from the yard, planted the cattails. And on top of that, I put a bunch of pea pebbles. And then I have this river rock on top of the pea pebbles. So this water all gets filtered through there. The cattails will latch on to a lot of like the big, 
the bigger stuff that doesn't make it through the filter or that does make it through the filter and actually cleans the water which is why it's so dang clear and then obviously it comes down and water falls into the pond so this is like a perfect setup for the soft shell it's spacious it's fairly deep you know it's got sand on the bottom it's clear it's clean like all my setups but this one especially and it's just set up as like a almost like a farm pond slash river there's not a whole lot of current in it which is why i wouldn't say river but it does have a lot of driftwood in it it's got the, the water lettuce on there and it's got this random board that she sits on all the time so yeah in here like i said before it's darwin it's the turtle some goldfish a catfish and a bunch of frogs that moved in and yeah this is this honestly is my favorite setup this setup is like fort knox there is a zero percent chance any turtle would be able to escape this setup just i mean look at this i spent some serious time on this setup here it's it's just, it's a good setup i'm this is my pride and joy of enclosures here um the pond i feel like i could have done better it's kind of iffy with all the slate i don't really like that of all the slate but it works it looks good it's not giving me any problems and the bog filter i love this thing i love the bog filter so i mean yeah not much to be said about you know the rest of these ponds if you have any questions on some of the specs or like how I made them, I'll, I'll answer them in the comments. Just leave a comment below there. So as a quick recap, this is Darwin, my Eastern Spiny Soft Shells Pond. This is the Common Snapping Turtle Pond. As you can see here, nice little setup as well. And if you guys know what these things are, they're like, these things are heavy duty and they got stems. I always have to break them off because even if I pull them up, they still grow back. Anyway, then we got like the, the bigger pond here that's looking gross with algae. So those are my turtle setups. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, you know, nice little update for you guys on, you know, the setups and everything. Like I said, my favorite pond right here. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other suggestions i'm gonna be doing an eastern box turtle video here soon because a lot of you guys want to see those but uh it's almost getting to that point of the year where i need to start bringing the turtles in so a lot of videos that are coming up are going to be getting all the setups inside ready for the turtles so that's going to be super fun and exciting super excited to make videos about that but yeah thanks for watching i hope you had a great time or learned some questions comments concerns leave them down in the the comments below and i'll see you guys next time